family above all. Batman and Robin. Yours truly, Brandon Thompson as Bat, to continue my series of Batman reviews leading up to the Batman, which is coming out in a couple weeks. I really can't wait to see that. And since we're continuing on with the Joel Schumacher films, we have reached the big one. <laughs> Easily the worst of the bunch, Batman and Robin. <laughs> it was only a matter of time before I ended up talking about this film. <sighs> what else can I say about this film that hasn't already been said? Everybody knows how infamously bad this film is. Uh, critics hated it, audiences hated it, and general Batman fans in general hated it. And a lot of fans, even now, have like ex continued to express their disappointment with this film because uh, everything about it is just awful. I mean... From the acting, the costume design, the dialogue, just all everything about it. It was just, what were they doing? And the worst thing is, is that because of the massive amount of money that Batman Forever made back in 95, uh, Warner Brothers wanted to make it more family-friendly and more kid-friendly and more toyetic, so... Basically, this film is a two-hour toy commercial, and it's very clear that this film was made to sell toys. I mean, you could tell from the outfits, and especially with the design of the vehicles. I mean, especially when it comes to the Batmobile. I mean, for me, I don't see that as a vehicle that's used by a, a mass crime-fighting vigilante. I see a giant toy. That's basically what it is. And in fact... Here's a line from Poison Ivy in this movie. That's why every Poison Ivy action figure comes complete with him! This film is so bad that all, most of the cast and crew have publicly apologized for it, and even Joel Schumacher himself even apologized for how Batman and Robin turned out. If there's anybody watching this that, let's say, loved Batman forever and went into Batman and Robin with great anticipation, if I, if I disappointed them in any way, then I really want to apologize, because it wasn't my intention. My intention was just to entertain. And I will admit that it's not entirely their fault. Uh, I put most of the chunk of the blame on the script and as well as Warner Brothers, because if you have a studio that uh, wants to like uh, make a family-friendly movie, that's probably going to suck and it's not going to live up to fans' expectations, especially for what they expect from a Batman film. Well, who are you going to blame? <laughs> as far as recasting Batman goes for this film, uh, I'm pretty sure most of you are probably familiar. Uh, Val Kilmer was filming The Saint at the time and was unavailable to play Batman again. So they decided to have George Clooney re uh, replace Val Kilmer, and I like George Clooney. I think he's a fantastic actor, but as Batman, he's basically playing himself uh, in a Batman outfit because he never really even tries to like hide his voice when he's in the Batman suit. It's just you're basically hearing George Clooney's voice throughout the entire film when he's in the bat suit. I'm just like. At least try to, like, hide your voice. Because when you're in the bat suit, when you're Batman, you would at least want to try to change your voice to kind of, like, differentiate, uh, uh, differentiate, like, which persona you are, either Bruce Wayne or Batman. Because, I mean, I mean, whenever you don't change your voice, you're, I mean, someone, that, that's certainly going to raise an eyebrow. Just like, hmm. Does that voice sound familiar to anybody? Chris O'Donnell as Robin, uh, he was decent in Forever, but in here he's pretty bad because he's constantly bitching and moaning and whining, and he's almost like Anakin Skywalker from the prequel trilogy of Star Wars. It's just like, uh, yeah, it is that bad. Even though he, I mean, he and Batman began to like trust each other again, and on the and the third act of the film uh, is because throughout the film they're mostly fighting each other because of Poison Ivy. But 
they kind of like resolve their differences and well if you've seen the movie then you know how the third act ends how the film opens this is literally the first thing that we see butt shots and of course the bat nipples just in the first few, in the first minute of the film, just like, oh my god. Why? Now, when it comes to Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze, I honestly felt sorry for him. I'm just like, I love Arnold. I, I, I just like, I, I loved him since I was a kid. I mean, of course, I mean, because of Terminator and Kindergarten Cop, and, of course, Total Recall, and, you know, like, just, what the hell was he doing in this film? Uh, casting him alone, I think, was a huge mistake, especially given the direction that they were going for for his character, and having him, like, use ice puns in almost every single scene that he's in. And I don't account for how much ice puns are in the film, and that's... Uh, and not just uh, including, I'm not just like counting like Arnold's ice puns, but there's also like a few times where characters do ice puns of their own. I'm like, I had to like, like legit, like say, Arnold is like saying all of these, we do not need your help. I'm just like, oh my God. <sighs> yeah. Uh, I'll get to like how many ice puns are in the film after the end of the videos. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely look forward to that. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! And this first action sequence in the museum is something you, you would see in a Saturday morning cartoon, and especially with, like, you have, like, people just, like, flying through the air, like, they're obviously on wires. It's almost like people, I mean, like, someone on the set was, like, you know what, we're just gonna have you, like, fly through the air, and it's gonna look like you're obviously hanging on wires, just like, we're not idiots, we can see this shit! Mr. Freeze has a rocket ship uh, in his vehicle, and there's even a moment where Batman and Robin s uh, use, like, uh, the doors as surfboards, and they're surfing in the air, just... Oh god, that looked bad. And as they're chasing Mr. Freeze, Robin eventually gets frozen. I was frozen today! And you know what the worst part is? This all happens in the first 10 minutes of the film. And that's when you know that it's only gonna get worse. And believe me, it does. They completely botch a lot of characters in this film. Uh, mostly Mr. Freeze... Uh, especially how they handle his backstory, because if you remember how he was perfectly handled in the animated series, they cr uh, his backstory just made him one of the most popular and tragic characters of the Batman franchise. And how he's handled in this film, it's like taking one of the best Batman villains and turning him into a fucking joke. And there's Bane, uh, which in this next scene... Uh, you have a mad scientist, who's played by John Glover, by the way, and bless his heart that he's trying to give a good performance as this mad scientist who's turning this uh, skinny little dude into what's supposed to be Bane. And speaking of Bane, oh my fucking god, what the hell did they do to him? Because when it comes to Bane... He's easily one of Batman's most intelligent and badass foes, and they completely, like, removed his intelligence and just basically made him a zombie that's jacked up on steroids, because that's basically what he is in this film. He's only capable of saying, like, one or two words at, in almost every scene that he is in, just or and when he's in the absorbed in the observatory near the, near the third act, uh, we get this moment where he's uh, planting bombs, just going bomb, 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 bomb. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! What the hell were they doing to Bane? Oh my God! I've, I I I honestly hate it. I fucking hate it. 
and you have Poison Ivy played by Huma Thurman, and she's probably the best villain in the film, and that's only saying something given how poorly handled uh, Mr. Freeze and Bane are, and when it comes to her transformation alone, I mean, like, how the, like, the mad scientist just, like, pushes her over a table, like, that was, like, filled with all these chemicals and toxins and everything, and how she, like, uh, just sprouts from the ground uh, when she emerges as Poison Ivy, and, uh, the thing is, she kind of, like, spontaneously is somehow aware of the changes in her body, and, like, after all that, she kills the mad scientist with her poisonous kiss, and how she is somehow aware of her abilities now, it's never really explained. Although, I'm not gonna lie, this one moment in particular is kind of hilarious to me. I'm poison. That is one of my favorite dead scenes. Every time that comes on, I laugh so hard, and his, ooh, it's like, did he just come? <laughs> and after that, we get to see what Mr. Freeze's hideout looks like, and that's the most obvious of hiding places for a supervillain like Mr. Freeze. An ice cream factory of all places, just, they really went there. And to amp up the silliestness of this scene, besides showing what his hideout is, Mr. Freeze, I swear to God, I am not making this up, has his goons sing the Snowmeister song from the year without a Santa Claus. <sighs> oh, Jesus Christ. And he explains his master plan to one of his goons, and it's to, like, steal, like, these huge diamonds to power his ice cannon or something to uh, freeze the city and hold Gotham ransom so he can get the money that he needs to complete his research to get a cure for his dying wife. And most of us would be, like, uh, as the audience, I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have, like, said this before, and I'm probably gonna say it too, he has, like, these huge diamonds that are, like, this big. I mean, if you just cash them in, that could solve your problem. Just, why don't you just do that? It's almost like they, like, ha I mean, they took their common sense and just threw it out the door. Just, like, that's what this movie is, really. It's just common sense is out the window. Just <laughs> nothing but pure nonsense. And... This is what we get. One of the worst films ever made, and probably the worst thing to ever happen to Batman. And when we're introduced to Alfred's niece, Barbara, who's played by Alicia Silverstone, uh, she's not Barbara Gordon as she is in the comics. Uh, she's named Barbara Wilson, I believe. And why not have her? Uh, why not have her be Barbara Gordon, Commissioner Gordon's daughter? Uh, it's like. They're not even trying to respect the source material whatsoever. And how Barbara becomes Batgirl is just... I cannot help but laugh, and I'll get to that later. When it comes to the auction scene, I cannot help but be like... What is happening? Because you... I, I Every time this scene comes on, I'm just... I can't help but be like... Oh my god, uh, th this is like I'm watching a completely different film. The worst of it all is this moment, when uh, when Poison Ivy appears and she like seduces like everyone with her pheromone dust, and everybody starts bidding for her, including Batman and Robin, going back and forth with millions of dollars. And we get... This. Seven million. <laughs> And Mr. Freeze shows up and we get another dumb action sequence, and it could have ended better with Mr. Freeze just saying, Go party! <laughs> God, the ice buns are so annoying. And when it comes to this uh, street racing scene with motorcycles, uh, how it ends with uh, Dick uh, saving Barbara, uh, uh, the green screen, 
alone. I mean, when you when you see the uh, uh, the background just looks so it looks so bad. And when it comes to the scene with uh, Poison Ivy and Bane breaking Mister Freeze out of Arkham Asylum, uh, there's this like one little thing. And it's just this small little thing, and if you're paying attention, you would be like, what if, what just, what was that? And if you look at the little window uh, on, uh, like, Mr. Freeze's cell door, you can see, like, this one little shot of Bane. Uh, I mean, and he's just, like, standing there. And, and the thing is, I mean... Uh, the fir uh, when we s first see him at Arkham, uh, he, he like he just like pulls this like guard outside who's like standing right outside this gate or something that he, that he can tear apart with ease, and we see him in that one shot n next, like I mentioned before, and then the next uh, uh, moment is that when we see him like pushing Mister Freeze's gear in this cart, just like going through all these guards and everything. And this definitely could have been better if we didn't get this innuendo from Poison Ivy. I'll help you grab your rocks. And when it comes to Batman using his detective skills in this film, well, let's go over this real quick. It, it's right when uh, Batman and Robin go to Mr. Freeze's hideout at the ice cream factory. And they're trying to look for Mr. Freeze and... They go over, like, security camera footage, and then after that, uh, Commissioner Gordon shows them a photo of um, uh, Pam uh, Poison Ivy and uh, Bane in disguise, and Batman just says this. This is definitely the same pair that sprang freeze. No shit! And to anybody who, like, read Nightfall in the 90s who wanted a Batman versus Bane fight... I, I guarantee you, most people, when they saw this film in theaters, were so disappointed with how this turned out, because Bane back then was really popular, and the fight between, uh, like, you have a Batman and Robin fighting Bane, and of course you have Poison Ivy in the background, like, trying to seduce Batman and Robin and trying to uh, kiss them, uh, it's just how everything is handled, and then just, oh god... <sighs> I really feel sorry for everybody who was involved with this film. I really do. It's one of the few times where I watched a film this bad where I actually felt sorry for everyone who was involved. I really feel sorry for them. That's how bad this film is. So after Poison Ivy kills Mr. Freeze's wife and frames Batman for it, they come up with their new master plan, which is so absurd and it does not make any sense whatsoever. So now Mr. Freeze wants to freeze the entire world with an ice gu with a giant ice gun and Poison Ivy wants to repopulate the earth with her mutant plants and having mutant plants in a new ice age just like definitely not the best uh, combination so their conflicting goals somehow don't stop them from working together, just... <sighs> Who fucking came up with this idea? Just... I just like to know, like, what the hell they were thinking. And how Barbara becomes Batgirl is laughable. So she gets on Alfred's computer and she, like, uh, discovers the most easiest password ever. And having, like, images, like, projected onto her face, just, like, good god. And she, of course, discovers the entrance to the Batcave, and becomes Batgirl, and with no little experience to hand-to-hand -hand combat training, and because if you put on the costume, you're spontaneously a superhero. Well, in these movies, anyway. So Batman and Robin go after Poison Ivy, and she manages to kiss Robin, but doesn't kill him because Robin has a trick up his sleeve. Rubber lips. Just, huh. But hey, at least he had protection. <laughs> <laughs> Bad 
Batgirl appears and she kicks Ivy's ass and they go after Mr. Freeze. But right before they go after Mr. Freeze, they change their outfits and they have like these silver outfits. And I, I never really liked the design for the outfits, but you know what? Gotta make the uh, money to sell the toys, which is a huge mistake. And I do not like the looks of the vehicles either because... Uh, like, a, this is made to be a two-hour toy commercial. So Robin and Batgirl take down Bane pretty easily, and Batman has his final fight with Freeze. They manage to thaw the city, and he manages to convince Mr. Freeze that not only was his wife alive, but also tried to convince him to give him the cure for Alfred's disease, because... I mean, there's a subplot involving Alfred dying from the same disease that Mr. Freeze's wife had, but he was in the early stages, so he could be cured, while Mr. Freeze's wife had a more advanced stage of the disease where there was no cure. But the thing is, Alfred looked like he was pretty much close to dying, so how is he in the early stages? That, that does not make any sense. Mr. Freeze gives Batman the cure, Alfred is uh, better now, and the final shot was clearly made to set up the next movie, which of course never happened. Warner Brothers did have plans for a fifth Batman film, which would have been titled Batman Unchained, which would have had Scarecrow as the main villain, but due to the critical and financial failure of Batman and Robin, they have completely scrapped plans for a fifth film and have like gone through like numerous ideas and eventually in 2005 we got batman begins and for that thank god and christopher nolan is a genius and i don't know how i would feel about batman on film if he didn't like jump on board like after this shit uh yeah and there was one thing that ba uh, Batman and Robin did right, was that it was so, so bad that we got Batman Begins. Just, it took them eight years to, like, get Batman right, and they did. But when it comes to Batman and Robin, it has, like, no redeemable qualities whatsoever. The acting is just, uh, it's just so over the top, especially when it comes from the villains. Uh, the... The writing is just, it's just made to look like something you would hear from a Saturday morning cartoon. The effects were just, uh, just everything about this. I mean, the story, the acting, and the costumes, the effects, just everything, everything fails. And I respect Joel Schumacher for repeatedly apologizing for what happened with this film because i mean this was a film that was completely botched by studio interference because warner brothers really wanted this to be like a, a very much kid friendly as possible and you could tell throughout the film uh, even though there were like a few moments like here and there that you wouldn't consider family friendly like the innuendos and stuff like that but yeah but like I said, thank God we got Batman Begins. So when it comes to Batman and Robin, it fails on every level. And Batman and Robin, of course, gets an F. <laughs> this film had to offer just ice puns so what y'all think of the film let me know in the comments below and guys i am really looking forward to posting my review for batman begins which is coming up really soon and guys thank you so much as always for watching looking forward to doing more videos really soon and if you want my thoughts on older new films of course you know where to find me